Hi, I'm Rick Afley. I'm here today on the banks of the Deschutes River. It's mid to late August. Uh, you might notice there's a little haze in the air. There's a wildfire burning about 40 miles away. But we're here today to shoot a short video I'm calling What Trout Eat. What I'm going to do is go out and collect a few insects uh, from the stream bottom, uh, see what's there for trout to be feeding on. That's going to explain what kind of fly patterns we should be using and what techniques would be best to use to catch those fish. So let's get started. I'm standing here by this gentle riffle. And when you want to find out what's in a stream for fish to eat, these riffle areas are the perfect place to take a sample from. And the reason for that is riffles are kind of the major food producing areas of a stream. And if fish are feeding downstream in slower water, whatever is in the riffle is going to be drifting down to them. So if you know what's in the riffle, you really have a great idea of what other parts of the stream also have available for fish to eat. So I'm just going to start by picking up a couple of little pieces of cobble, we'll put them in the tray, and let's just see what kind of insects are attached to it. This is a good way to just start uh, your day fishing to see what's out here and give you some clues to what uh, food is available for fish. And you're going to find a variety of different food forms. So let's set it down and maybe we can get a little better picture of this. I'll get my little tweezers out and we can start uh, looking at what's on this piece of cobble. Right off the bat we have a large case caddis. This is uh, called an October caddis or fall caddis. Uh, it's not really important food right now but in another month and a half, a month, it will be. It'll be emerging. So that is one nice thing to know. Uh, these little rocks that are stuck together with little threads, those are net spinning caddis. And the threads are the little nets they make to catch food. And there you can see it crawling off. That bright green larva is a net spinning caddis larva. The net spinning caddis are one of the more common and important uh, items in the tr uh, stream to be abundant right now for fish to be eating. All these little areas that look like it's just kind of a clump of debris has a little net associated with it where there's a net spinning caddis. It could be gone or, yep, see there was another one right there, a little guy. Mostly net spinning caddis and that this time of year in August that's not really too surprising. Uh, a lot of other things have already emerged earlier in the year. But well, some of the other things on the rocks here that probably are a little difficult to see. There are some um, aquatic moth larvae out here. They've been emerging. But if you look, these brown gray patches, that's an aquatic moth larva underneath that. And the adults, there's the larva right there. The adults can be uh, good to imitate. They look a bit like a caddis. Some of the other things on this rock, all these, they're really small. These little elliptical cases are micro caddis. And to be honest, they're so small, I don't usually try to imitate them. But you can get an idea on this one rock, there are hundreds of insects. Let's go get the net. This is called the D-frame kick net. There are other types of nets you can use. This is the window screen net, works fine as well. This works nice, you can use it in lakes or streams because of the bag. Uh, these are available for sale. I have a link on my website uh, where you can go to get these if you want to buy one. Uh, just go to rickhafley.com to my website. But to do this, I'm just going to do three or four spots. Turn some rocks over here. You kind of rub them off. You want to get the bugs that are attached off. But you'll get a lot of the insects that are good swimmers that come off as soon as you lift a rock up. They swim away. This way you catch them in the net. So we're going to get 
a better sample than just what we got by looking at a rock. That's a good start, but this is a much better overall sample what's there than I usually get my foot in there. Shoe companies love this, Sims and Patagonia. I go through a lot of their boots doing this. They love it. Okay, let's see what we got. I'm going to empty this one, and we'll do a couple more before we're all done. Well, that's one. You can see I've got a lot of debris, but that's okay. We'll sort this out right now. Well, one of the things I caught is a sculpin, which is a little fish, quite common, streams everywhere in North America, and trout do eat them. Uh, probably people fish muddler minnow patterns. That imitates a sculpin, among other things. And this is uh, eh, maybe an inch and a half long. Typical size, they get considerably bigger, but that's a nice size little sculpin. This is one of my favorite little guys. It's called a green rock worm. It's a caddisfly that doesn't build a case to live in. So it's what we also call a free living caddis and it's very available for fish to eat. And it's this, you know, size 12, 14 hook would match that. And it's, it's a, just a great fly pattern to use. Okay, here's another goodie. This looks very much like the green rockworm, but it's uh, the net spinning caddisfly. And I often use the same pattern. Uh, the green rockworm pattern will work for the net spinning caddis also. The net spinning caddis tend to be much more abundant, and it's another reason that green rockworm nymph pattern works well. These are, I think from what I'm seeing, maybe one of the most numerous insects we are collecting from the riffle here. Here's a nice uh, morsel. Great big salmon fly nymph, stonefly. That's the salmon fly, which people come here on the Deschutes in May to fish the salmon fly hatch. This nymph actually is in the river for up to four years before it's fully grown. This is probably a three-year-old nymph that's going to take another year to grow uh, before it's ready to emerge next spring. Uh, it's a real mouthful and a great uh, fly to imitate if they're around in abundance. Uh, here, oh, this is really great. This is a caddis ready to hatch, caddis pupa. Oh, oh, can I get it? Yes. Watch this guy swim. Come on, may I squeeze them? That's a little caddis pupa that was getting ready to emerge. And he was uh, swimming around, and I think I just uh, squeezed him a little too hard. But now you can see... That's a, um, called a, a, a saddle case caddis, uh, Glossosoma, and it's one of the most abundant caddis that are out right now on the river. And so this would be an excellent uh, thing to imitate if you're fishing this afternoon because they hatch up swimming up to the surface and the fish love to feed on these little pupa. So to summarize, I'd just like to go through the fly patterns that to me would be good choices for what the trout are eating based on the insects we've seen in the tray today. First off, we saw some salmon fly nymphs, so a stonefly pattern, nymph pattern would always be a good choice. Uh, this time of year, you don't want to be using the really large size of these patterns, uh, like sixes, three um, X long. That's not the size you want to be using this time of year. Uh, this time of year, uh, 10s would be appropriate, or even 12, uh, size 12 hook would be appropriate for the stonefly nymphs this time of year, but that would certainly be one choice. Second, we saw a few, but not very many, blue-winged olive nymphs. Uh, blue-winged olives are usually going to be a present year-round, and the nymphs are active swimmers, so often they're a reasonable choice just about any time you end up fishing on a trout stream throughout the West or even North America. Um, today we didn't see very many, so they wouldn't be at the top of my list. We did see that one caddis pupa. So a caddis pupa could be a really good choice today. Uh, this pattern is uh, a good one. There's many different patterns out there for caddis pupa. To match the size of the little saddle case pupa, you want to use probably a size 18 with a tan body. This one has a little bead head on it, which is always uh, helpful to sink it a bit. 
Uh, at the top of my list, I guess, would be the green rockworm pattern. Uh, that's the most numerous caddis we saw out there were the green rockworms and then the green colored uh, net spinning caddis. So the green rockworm nymph would be just a great choice, probably a size 12, 2x long nymph hook would be a good size. These are typically weighted the way I tie them. It's got a bead head on there, so it's going to sink. You want to fish these right on the bottom. So these patterns would be the choices I'd go to with the green rockworm right at the top, the caddis pupa probably second on the list, and then kind of a toss-up between blue-winged olives and stonefly nymphs. Uh, but uh, that's what it appears the trout would likely be eating today based on what we saw. Now, uh, just a few words about uh, some things going on on the Deschutes River. Ten years ago, they made some significant changes in how they're releasing water from the dams that are about 50 miles upstream. And that change has resulted in a decline in water quality. Uh, the Deschutes River Alliance has been working uh, tirelessly in the last uh, eight or nine years to return the river to a healthier state. One of the things we've seen today is that there's still insects here, there's mayflies and some stoneflies, but if you were here 15, 20 years ago, you'd see a much richer population of different types of mayflies, more abundant stoneflies and caddisflies. So there has been a shift to more snails and worms, more tolerant aquatic insects as a result of the decline in water quality. So to help save the river, to help return it to its healthier state, please go to the Deschutes River Alliance website, DeschutesRiverAlliance.org, read what we've been doing, and make a donation if you can. The river will thank you.